So 7.1, we're going to really learn a different way to solve equations here. And so, so far we've learned how to solve quadratic equations by factoring. And let's see, what's the other stuff? We learned how to solve rational equations, remember, like with fractions. And then we also learned how to solve square roots. That was the last chapter. That's those little square root stuff is going to help us actually. And before we begin, I want to do, do maybe like an introduction. Um, sort of on this method right here. Thank you so much. So let's do a quick introduction on, on this right here. If you have something that's being squared is equal to a number, it sort of splits off into two different pieces. That's kind of what we have there. The book does it this way for the first example, then it does it a different way for the rest of them. So I'm going to do it the other way so you can get used to that. But just a quick introduction how this all works. If I have something that looks like this, x squared is equal to 16. Normally what we would do, we would probably subtract 16 from both sides. And we'd write it as this right here. We good? I think from here, like, oh, Mr. H, I know what to do. We factor this down because of the difference of two squares. So x times x gives you x squared. And then a negative 4 and a positive 4 gives you a negative 16. Good? And then add, let's see, splitting it off because of the zero product property. Adding 4 to this side gives you x equals 4. Subtracting 4 gets you x equals negative 4. We're good? Again, stuff we know. There's my two answers. Done. Okay. What we really want to look at is this right here. What happens? Is there a different way I can do this problem? And so we're going to do a more, slightly more generalized way than factoring. <coughs> so here's what I do. If this is a being squared, all I'm going to do, I'm going to put squared on both sides. Remember how in uh, the previous chapter we used to square things to get rid of the square root? So we're sort of going the other way. We're going to square root both sides so that we can get rid of the square. Now the only little problem is, notice it got two different answers here. Here, only one. So what we do, we put a little plus or minus right here. Just to remind us, why I want the positive as well as the negative answer. So real quick here, if you are the one that is putting down the square root on both sides of an equation, you have to put down the plus and minus. Now technically, there should be a little plus or minus over here, but mathematicians, they're lazy like crazy. And so they don't ever put this down because you're going to cancel off anyways. So kind of like why you write extra stuff if you're going to cancel it anyways. But technically, there is a plus or minus here because you're doing the exact same thing to both sides. Anyways, the square root of something being squared, that goes away. I'm left with x. In this case, plus or minus is in front. And square root of 16 is a 4. And voila, do I have both answers? Absolutely. There's my positive 4. There's my negative 4. And this is called the square root method of solving equations. So now I think let's begin. So how do we do this? Well, notice this is just x by itself. What happens if it's not just x? What happens if it's 2x minus 3? We still do the same stuff. We're going to take the square root of both sides. We're going to put a little plus or minus right here. And notice the square went away, right? Now it's just 2x minus 3. And so square root of 25 is 5 with the plus or minus in front. And notice what happens here, though. I have to still add 3. I'm going to keep it the same here because there's two different answers here. So I'm going to still divide by 2. There's that. And now I sort of separate them two different things. I think we can probably do this in our mind. I think we can probably do 3 plus 5 is 8. Divide by 2 is 4. 3 minus 5 is a negative 2. Negative 2 divided by 2 is a negative 1. So then you sort of separate them. I think we can probably skip all these steps and probably do them in our mind. OK, we good there? 4 and negative 2 are the answers. We're good there. 4 and negative 2. Negative 1. Thank you. Or negative one are the answers. Okay, the question always comes up, Mr. H, instead of doing this method, could I actually all oh, foil 2x minus 3 times another 2x minus 3, foil it all out, keep on simplifying it, scoot the 25 over to set it equal to 0, and solve it? Yes, you can. A lot more work, but yes, you can foil this all out, subtract our 25, start factoring it down eventually. Hey, we still get the same answers, right? problem is, um, it only works sometimes. Because if 
this was some square root answers, it would not work. Because remember, factoring, factoring only works for integers and fractions, right? I can factor with fractions, I can factor with integers, but I can't factor with square roots. And so in that case, I have to know this extra method. All right, so let's go for it here. Solve this one. And if you can go ahead of me, all yours, go for it. Let's go for it here, so hopefully you stayed ahead of me. What I have is this right here on both sides, but I'm going to take a square root here, a square root here, plus or minus, don't forget. The square root and the square root cancels off, so now I have 3x plus 2, and I got a plus or minus 4. From there, how about subtract 2 from both sides? Again, don't combine these together yet. We're going to keep them separate here, so the one that you have added or subtracted right now, leave that in front, because you got the little plus minus stuff going on there. Divide by 3. That's perfect. Then now we kind of think about what is this going to be? Uh, let me just rewrite it so we have it all here. Okay, so now we got negative 2. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write it out, but if you can do it in your mind, go for it, okay? I just want to write out the pieces here. So negative 2 plus 4 then divide by 3, that makes positive 2 divided by 3. On the the other way with the minus 4 now, so negative 2 subtract 4 divided by 3, so that would be negative 6 divided by 3, or just negative 2. Cool. Alright, the way the book always writes the answers, it says x is equal to 2 thirds, and then it has a comma, and then gives you the two answers. Again, we're going to change it up just slightly each time. So 16 is a perfect square. Now the next question is what happens if that number that we're going to take the square root of is not a perfect square? Well, let's try it. It's the same exact process still, right? So it's uh, 4x minus 3 squared. Same exact process, just the numbers we're going to work out a little different. Cool. All right, take a square root here, take a square root here, plus or minus. And again, the uh, left-hand side cancels, leaving us just with 4x minus 3. The other side, here's the fun part here. So first of all, plus or minus, goes there. Uh, 50 in terms of perfect squares. 25 times 2. So that means if 5 gets to go out, and then also notice it's negative. We learned that in the last chapter here. That has to be an i out there. Right. Negative square root gives you an i outside of the square root. Leftovers? 2. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. So you guys are sophisticated Math 63 students. Uh, whenever you do see a square root of a negative number, and if you're just doing a basic algebra sort of problem, we're going to work with the i as a complex number. Normally what happens if you're working about word problems and you're talking about something reaching a certain velocity, falling to the ground, if you get an I, we don't accept those as possible answers because it doesn't make sense. It's not a real number to fit a real situation. Okay. All right. With that said, let's go for it here. So let's add 3 to both sides. Again, keeping everything the same. So I've got a 4x here, a 3, because I don't want to write down the plus sign, plus or minus, 5i root 2. Okay, how about divide by 4 now on both sides, and I got myself a 3 plus or minus 5i root 2 divided by 4. And you know what? That is the final answer. A whole bunch of weird stuff in there, but that's it. Um, yeah, kind of... Let me check here. The question is... We break the four to two different pieces because there's a because it's a.
complex part or imaginary part there. Let me just check what the book does. They keep them underneath the same fraction. So most math textbooks would actually separate them just because they are different parts of a real number or a very complex number. Okay, number three. Let's see what happens here. X squared plus 10x plus 25 is equal to 20. But remember, before we do this, we have to have a perfect square on one side. Hey, hold on, though. Isn't uh, x squared plus 10x plus 25, isn't that a perfect square trinomial? And if you remember your factoring times, remember this little guy right here? It's actually a x plus 5 times another x plus 5 to give you x squared plus 10x plus 25. Okay, so we should know this right here, and then we'll figure out a little way to figure out how to know whether or not it's a perfect square. But we've got 20 over here. I think you guys can finish this off. I'll give you guys half a minute, try it yourself, just to finish it off. you 
gets you a four. And I think we know how to do it from this, right? Can we go from here now? Take a square to both sides, get you plus or minus two, add the three, and then you split it off in two different places. The books start off with a fraction already. Let's not do a fraction yet. So I'm going to introduce an extra little problem here.
So let's try a fraction here then. Sorry, got a few people still writing it down. Wait a little bit. All right, I'll give you guys about half a minute head start. All yours. X squared plus 3x minus 4 equals 0. follow me here. Let's go for it together here. So first things first, got to move the 4 over, so add 4 to both sides. Leave a little space. I'm going to move it to this side of the screen here, just so I can have more space there. Okay. Why does it turn into a fraction? Is because 2 doesn't go into 3 evenly. So here it is. Some fractions here. 3 divided by 2, or what I can really do is I can just say 2 thirds, right? I'm sorry, 3 halves in this case. All right, if that's the case, I'm going to square this guy. And again, sort of following what we did before in the previous problem, if I square this one, it should give me a positive 9 over 4. Then we have another extra level to get to here after this one. Okay, so 9 over 4. That means if I add that one to this side, i got to add it to the other side as well. Let's see, what is the perfect square that gets me that trinomial? Uh, in order to get an x squared, I'd have to have x. I notice always plus signs here everywhere, right? Especially in the middle. There's a plus sign in the middle, so I know it's going to be positive. And then what square is to give you 9 fourths? Okay, it's the 3 halves, of course. That's exactly what we squared in order to give you that 9 fourths. On the other side, we got a little bit more work to do, though. We've got to get common denominators, all that good stuff here. So maybe let's work this off to the side here. So common denominator of those two numbers. I go with 4, yep. So that 4 now becomes 16 over 4. Still stays as a 9 fourths, so adding it together gives you 25 fourths. more complicated because they're fractions, but that's okay. We can still work it here. Let's go for it. So I have the perfect, so I have the binomial that's being squared. That means I'm going to take a square to both sides, plus or minus. Again, that cancels, leaving me with x plus 3 over 2. This one, let's see, plus or minus. I, hey, they're both perfect squares, huh? So that's actually going to be a 5 on top and a 2 on the bottom, right? 5 is five squared gives me 25, 2 squared gives me 4. All right, almost done. I just need to move that uh, 3 halves over. So really what I have is x is equal to negative 3 halves plus or minus 5 halves. this point, of course, I have to ask the question here, how many people read 7.1 prior to coming to class today? 
how many wish they would have read 7.1 prior to coming to class today. All right. All right, so negative 3 halves plus 5 halves. They have common denominators. So just kind of, let's do the plus one. So negative 3 halves plus 5 halves makes 2 over 2, is that right? 2 over 2 then makes 1. Then let's go the other way here. So negative 3 halves minus 5 halves makes negative 8 halves. Divide by 2 makes negative 4. Yep. And again, we could have solved this by factoring as well. We did want to do it this other way. And again, this would, factoring method would not give us square roots in our answers. Okay, the next one, again, is pretty difficult, and the reason for it is because we learned a little easier way than solving it by completing the square. So now the problem is that little 5 in front of x squared. That's what we've got to deal with now. So again, what we're going to do, we're going to switch the 2, bring it to the other side. So let's subtract 2 from that side. Leave a little space here. All right, and what do we do? You know, let's actually make that x 5x squared into just to be a regular x squared. Because remember, if we have an equal sign, that allows us to either multiply or divide by any number we like, except for 0, right? So let's do that. Let's actually divide every single term by 5. If I do that, I get my x squared. Perfect. 3 halves. Leave a little space. Negative 2 fifths. Again, no one has fractions here, but let's see if we can tough it out here. So we're going to take that negative 3 halves, and we are going to divide it by 2. But even better than that, how about if we take the negative 3 halves and multiply by a 1 half? Let's see, that becomes negative 3 over 10, yep. Okay, what do I do with that negative 3 tenths? I'm going to square it. I'm going to put it right into there. Because that is what's going to form a perfect square. Trinomial here. So squaring that one, always plus, huh? Because negative times a negative is still a positive. I've got 9 on top, and i got got 100 to, uh, 10 times 10 is 100. So whatever I do to one side, i got to do to the other. Gee whiz, big numbers here. All right, let's see if we can put this together here. So simplifying that over here, common denominator of that would be a 100, is that right? So 5 and 100 makes 100 as the common denominator. So let's like 5 times 20 should give me that. So that means 20 times a negative 2. doesn't need to come down, it already has it. So adding this up now, so 100 on the bottom. And how about a negative 31 looks like, right? Because they're different signs, got to subtract. Okay, I think we got this here. So this is in parentheses now. What is being squared is x minus sign comes actually from here as well, if you think about it. Minus 3 goes here, and then the 10 is really the exact same number 
before you square it. That's what you're going to use. On the other side, it's this number here. So equal to negative 31 over 100. Take the square to both sides here. Those go away, so I'm left with x minus 3 tenths. That's the easy part. Let's see, plus or minus. I've got to have it anyway, so plus or minus. And again, remember from algebra, the squared gets to go on top here, the squared gets to go here. And because it's a negative, let's see, this 31 is 31 a perfect square, has factors of perfect squares. Uh-uh. Okay, so the only thing is to go out is a little i. i goes out in front. Square root of 31 over... Cool, I heard it. It's 10, right? Because it's the square root of a 100. Alright, any questions on that? Any uh, where those numbers came from? Adding 3 tenths to both sides now to get the x by itself. That's gone. This is going to be again written as a single quotient. There it is. Of course, the application question here is something that we need to talk about. There's uh, two special triangles that occur in trigonometry, which is the class after this one, pre-calculus trigonometry. And so it is called the 60-30-60-90 uh, triangle, this one right here, because it has special values. And then we also have the 45-45-90 triangle. That one, again, has special values in trigonometry. They're both right triangles, so you know what theorem works here? The Pythagorean theorem works here. So let's go to a, a question here. So if the shortest side of a 30, 60, 90 triangle is 2 inches long, find the length of the other two sides. And there's like a little trick here that the book does not talk about. Because we don't start off with a 30, 60, 90 triangle right away. What we do is we start off with a a 60, 60, 60 triangle. So that all the sides are exactly the same and all the angles are exactly the same. That's kind of what we start off with first. And it's a little bit of a trick here. So then we know what? Let's see if the shortest side in a 30, 60, 90 triangle is 2 inches long. Okay, so if this is, these guys are all the same. One little property from geometry that the book it just assumes you know is this one right here. If I were to drop a line straight down, what would happen to this piece and this piece? Yeah, I cut it in half, huh? So bring it down. We called it the altitude. Bring down the altitude here, it hits right here. Again, mine is not drawn to scale because this one was a little bigger, but technically this should be the same thing as this one here. And let's take a look at the angles. Also, if you drop an altitude of an equilateral triangle, the, the angle itself gets split in half as well. So now we have ourselves the 60 down here. But this one is actually just the 30 because it took it in half. 
All right, and the shortest side is one. This guy. Well, I'm sorry, shortest side is two. Sorry, looking at the example here. It says shortest side. So this little triangle, that's the one we're going to want to look at right here. It's the one right here facing towards the right. So if the shortest side is two, do we know anything else? Well, yeah, we know that. This guy will be two, and then this guy should be four, right? And this guy should be four. We're really concerned about this one right here, because this is the one that, so if that's two, this has to be a four, right? Because it's double that, because we cut it in half, right? Because each of the sides of the triangle is four, or are four. So really, we have one variable here. It's this little blue line. So how, or what is the length of the blue line? That's what we want to figure out. That's where the Pythagorean theorem comes in. So a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So let's take the a as the 2, bring it in here. 2 squared, let's take the x as the b, so that's x squared, and 4 being the c. All right, can you solve that? This is actually a pretty good problem because it shows you that you cannot solve this by factoring. There's no way to solve it. All right, so squaring the 2 becomes a 4, x squared over here, and a 16. And we have to do the squared method. There's no other way to do it here, so let's take and subtract the 4 out over here, so that becomes 12. All right, and of course, this is a word problem, so let's think about this here. I'm going to take a square to here. I'm also going to take a square to here. And the question is, how come I'm not going to put plus or minus? Perfect, yep. A distance or a length cannot be negative, so useless to pull negative out in front. Don't put plus or minus. We assume it's plus. That cancels, and the 12 is 4 times 3. 2 gets to go out, and the square root of 3 stays. Mm -hmm. So this little blue side right here of a 30-60-90 triangle is 2 root 3. We, later on, we learn that this is sort of the relationship between the sides. If this was 1, this gets multiplied by root 3, which gets over here. And then this side and this side are always doubles of each other. Right? So if this was 10, this would be 5, and this would be 5 root 3. But that's a little later on when we look at trigonometry stuff. Okay, number 7, we are going to skip. Um, didn't want to really cover that one. That was okay. But let's jump to the quadratic formula, 7.2. All right, they write it in a sort of different way that is normally done. They write it as two different answers. And notice the only difference between the two is there's a little plus here, there's a little minus there. And it's in front of the square root. So the way it's normally written in math textbooks is that we just put a plus or minus in front of the square root. All right, there's a little proof of it yeah, on page uh, 437. If you're curious, you can take a look at that. We're not really going to look at the proof. We want to just be able to use it. How do we use it? So let's skip through that. Let's look at an example before we keep on going. All right, why is the quadratic formula so useful is because if this cannot be factored, all we do is instead of doing the completing the square, and completing the square, 7.1 was really just to gear us into 7.2. That's kind of what it was for. So x squared minus 5x minus 6, all i got to do is i got to know that the a value is the coefficient of x squared. The b value is the coefficient of x, and c is the constant coefficient. It's the one all by itself over here. And the 
Quadratic formula says the answer to this is okay, whatever the numbers fall into this right here. So only thing we have to be careful for is this little guy. It's the opposite of b. So it's a negative. In this case, it's a negative of a negative 5. And it's five, positive 5. And what I like to do instead of, we can square numbers right away. I like to just square this right away. I can make it a 20, 25 right away and keep on going. So anyways, so doing this here, 25 plus 24 makes 49. Squared at 49 is 7. And notice what we're going to do again. It's what is 5 plus 7 is 12 divided by 2 is 6. 5 minus 7 is negative 2 divided by 2 is a negative 1. So it sort of gives you both answers there. All right, let's try it ourselves, though. Um, let me go back real quick here. Um, normally what happens in mathematics whenever you're doing problems, what we do is you just kind of quickly glance at this and you say, okay, can I factor this right away? Are the two numbers that I know multiplied to negative 6, add to negative 5? Negative 6, positive 1, would that do it? Yeah, so if you can factor it right away, factor it, because it's a lot easier. If you cannot factor it, then what we do, we normally move to the quadratic formula. So that's why we don't really do completing the square a whole bunch. Because why do all that work when I can just sort of plug into a formula? All right, let me write down the formula. Let you guys try it first here. So A is 6. Are we good there? That's the number in front of x squared. B is the number in front of x. So how about 7? C is the loner, which is 2. And again, let me write out the formula again just to make sure we have it on the same page. There it is. Give you guys a little bit of a head start. Sometimes you don't have enough of a quotient, or else you didn't make enough of a quotient. So what we do is just sort of extend the fraction bar. And sometimes you don't have enough of the radical, so, so you just extend that out as much as you need to. Divide by 2 times 6, or 2 times a. OK, with that, let's see, we got, we got ourselves a minus 7 now, plus or minus. OK, let's see if we can do this in our head real quick here. Um, let's see, 6 times 2 is 8. No, 12. 12 times, that's 48, huh? 49 subtract 48, it will just be a 1. 12 on the bottom. Cool, yeah. So negative 7 plus or minus 1 divided by 12. So what are the two answers that come out of that? Negative 7 plus 1, it will be negative 6, and negative 6 divided by 12. <coughs> negative 1 over 2, cool. Negative 7 minus 1, it would be negative.
negative 8, and negative 8 divided by 12, eh, 4 goes into both those, right, without 4? So how about a negative 2 over 3? Let's go on. We do have five problems. We just did one, so so six problems. So let's go. For it. Solve using the quadratic formula. Whoa, this one looks a little different. Notice it has fractions in here, but the only problem is I don't like to work with fractions and the quadratic formula. So let's do this here. Let's multiply through by a common denominator. Let's multiply both sides by six. That will get rid of my fractions. And again, I'm able to do it because I have an equal sign on my hands. So multiply six over here, six over there. All right, six goes into, two goes into six three times with x squared. Six goes to the x, gives us six x. And then six times a one third, three goes into six twice, so just a two. So real quick here, in order to do the quadratic formula, it has to be set equal to zero. So don't do the quadratic formula until you have it all set equal to zero. Subtract two from both sides. Three x squared plus six x minus two equals zero. Now we're ready. And again, if you need to know what your a, b, and c are, go for it. Just write it down. If you don't and you got it, that's fine. So I got a is equal to three. B equals 6, C equals negative 2. And yes, careful with the negative signs, positive signs. They have to go with those numbers. All right. And again, I assume that you're going to use the formula, see the formula, look at, look at it in front of you here all the time as you plug the stuff in because I'm not going to write down the formula again. But I'm going to go with negative b. So it might be 6, so minus 6, plus or minus. Square root of 6. Minus 4 times a times c. And again, notice that little negative 2 almost looks like it's outside of the radical symbol. Because that, we're going to have to sort of extend that little radical symbol to make sure that you know that it's inside there. All right, I'm going to extend my quotient as well a little bit here. So I get 2 times a, so 2 times 3. So, negative 6, plus or minus. Oh, boy. Let's see how that's going to work out here. Let's see. Uh, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Negative 6 times negative 4 is a positive 24. So, it's positive 24 plus 36. That's a little something that we need to talk about here. So, you remember, order of operations, you can't subtract stuff until you've multiplied them. So, this, all this right here has to be multiplied, and I include the little negative 2. So, you sort of just say, okay, negative 4 times 3 is negative. 12, negative 12 times negative 2 is positive 24, so it's 36 plus 24. That gives you the 60 minus 6 on the bottom. Still keep on going. One more step here. And then we've got to finish it off here. So uh, that's all nice. Okay, 60. Does 60 have a perfect square inside it? Again, let's look at. Um, Squares 4. Is 4 going to 60? 15 times? Cool. Let's see if we go any higher here. 9. Big 3 squared? Nope. 4 squared is 16. 16 going to 60? Nope. 5 is 25. 25? No. 6 is 36. 7 is 49. 
A to 64? No, so I think it's 4. So 64 is 4 times 15. 2 goes on the outside, 15 stays inside. So negative 6, plus or minus. 2 on the outside, 15 stays inside, over 6. Okay. And again, each one of these problems has a little extra little piece to it that you have to learn. So it's not just learning it, it there's an extra piece each time. Okay, so the extra piece here is that I can simplify this some more, which we haven't seen yet. Let me show you two different ways to simplify it. Let, let me rewrite it here. This is negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 2, da, 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 da. Let me do it two different ways so you guys can see which way. This is the proper mathematical way of doing it. So we look at the top only and we see if we can factor something out. What can we factor? What has common terms here? Yeah, the 2, right? 2 goes into 2, 2 goes into 6. I can factor out the 2. Leftovers would be negative 3, plus or minus. And again, the 2 is already here, right? So just be a root 15 over 6. That would be sort of the mathematically proper way of doing it. You factor out what is common. And the question here is, can I reduce, cancel, what can I do here? Yeah, 6 and the 2, I can at least bring it down to a 1 and a 3. And then again, there's my final answer because there's no multiplication here anymore. So I got minus 3, plus or minus root 15 over 3. That's one way. All right, the shortcut method, though, is this way. I'm going to start off again real quickly here. And instead of factoring out something, what we do is we ask ourselves, what what a number would go into a 6, a 2, and a 6? 2. So really what I do is I divide the least common denominator of these guys here. So I divide that 6 by 2, I divide that 2 by 2, and I divide that 6 by 2. Let's see what happens here. Negative 6 divided by 2 is a negative 3, plus or minus. 2 divided by 2 is a 1, and we don't put 1s in front of square roots. 6 divided by 2 is 3, and do I get the same answer? Yeah, okay, so mathematically proper way, a little sort of quick, a little quicker way to do it. Okay, getting a little bit more complicated. What happens if we have variables in the denominator? Oh, just like the previous problem, we multiplied everything by 6. In this case, we're going to have to multiply everything by... So I have some space to show you what I'm multiplying by. How about we multiply through by x plus 4, also by x, and also by 2. I need all those terms here. So multiplying through by x plus 4 times x times 2 here. x plus 4 times x times 2 here, and x plus 4 times x times 2 there. And again, what I'm trying to do is get rid of my... x plus 4 is cancel over here, so I'm just left with x times 2 times 1. I like this. I can just put down 2x. Careful in this one, though. And the, you have to be careful because of the little minus sign right here. So the x's are gone, but it's 2 times x plus 4, but the little negative on the outside. So what I tend to do, even when I do this myself, I tend to not multiply stuff with minuses in front of it still. Just leave it alone for now. 2's are gone here. This is x times x plus 4. You can multiply that out if you like, but I just waited a little bit here. I kind of like this step as well because it shows exactly what's left over. So if I didn't check if I did something wrong, this would be the step most likely that I did something wrong in. But let's go for it here. So 2x is there. Negative 2 times x is a minus 2x. 
negative 2 times a4 minus 8. x times x is x squared, and x times 4 is 4x. Uh, collecting on each side here. So how about these guys are gone, right? 2x subtract 2x. with, uh, I can't collect those here, so I'm, let's move the 8 over. So 0 is equal to 8. x squared plus 4x plus 8. Okay, it's set equal to 0. Let you guys finish it off. Plug it into a quadratic formula. See what you guys get as answers. So look at what you plugged in first. This is the simplified version in here already. So that's going to be uh, 16 subtract 32, which makes a minus 16 inside the radical. Then we got the radical simplified into a minus 4 plus or minus 4i over 2. And again, much easier to think about a number that 4, 4, and 2 number that goes into all three of those. We do have two. So divide each of those numbers by two. And notice the denominator cancels completely, so I don't need to do anything there. So negative four divided by two is a minus two, plus or minus. Four divided by two is a two with an i next to it. slightly different one as well. Let's look at this one here. Notice it's not a um, t squared, it's t cubed. So looking at this here, but it, isn't that a special form though? Doesn't it look like a difference of two perfect cubes? So in this case we are going to use a little bit of factoring techniques. We're sort of going to combine both factoring and quadratic formula here. So what cubes to give you 8 t cubed? What cubes to give you a 27? It's a 3. So if you go back to your factoring rules for a difference of 2 cubes, here it is. It's 2t minus 3. It's the same exact stuff without being cubed. Next parenthesis is squaring the first term. So 4t squared, taking the opposite sign so that all the middles will cancel. And this one's a little different from squares here. you got to multiply the two terms together and stop there. So 2 times t times 3. 6t. So don't double the middles here. Always plus at the end. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the 3 we square that one to give you a 9. 
All right, so again, notice two, num two items multiplying to give you a zero. I can split those off by the zero product property into a 2t minus 3 equals zero, or 4t squared plus 6t plus 9 equals zero. So this is a usual one because it sort of combines both factoring and quadratic form at the same time. All right, so how about adding 3 to both sides, dividing by 2. We've got 3 halves here. On this side, let's plug in some values here. So kind of careful here. It's not x anymore. It's t, so it would be t equals. So take our b value, take the opposite, so negative 6 plus or minus, bless you. Square the b value, it's 36. Subtract, again, it's 4 times the other 4 over here, the 6 over here. Sorry, the 9 over here. And then 2 times 4, which is the 4a. All right, give you guys half a minute here, see if you can finish it off by yourself simplifying as much as you can. have a perfect square in its factor, which is 36 times 3. Uh, but it's negative as well, so kind of careful here. So let's see, the 6 gets to go out. Because it was negative, the i is also out. And then leftover is just the 3. Uh, 2 times 4 is 8. Simplify this. Yeah, two goes into all these guys, right? <laughs> so half of negative six is negative three. Half of six is three over here, and then half of eight is a four. Ooh, whole bunch of threes here, and being divided by four. just do one of these here. There's a 5 and 6 here. Let's just do 5. I want to show you a little extra something, which happens in both of them. So an object thrown up in the air, initial velocity is 32 feet per second. Maybe like a soccer ball or something. That's why it sounds like a soccer ball here. It's kicked into the air, falls according to this equation here. So the 32 really comes from this right here. It's the initial velocity. How far, how fast did you, with what speed did you kick the ball? This little 16, this little 16 has to do with gravity. So on Earth it's 16, on Jupiter will be a whole bunch less, meaning a, a bigger negative. It says where s is the height of the object. So this is the height of the object above the ground in terms of time. At what times will the object be 12 feet above the ground? Kind of necessary. Maybe if you're doing fireworks or something, you want it to explode while it's at its maximum height, not when it's right next to the person on the ground. Lose fingers that way. Okay, so we are going to put in 12 for the S and then rewrite the formula as is. Okay, and we've got to set it equal to zero. So what should we do? 
uh, subtract 12 here from both sides. Okay, a few things I want you guys to notice. Notice, uh, first of all, I don't like the fact that the t squared is all the way over here. I like to go in called standard form. So let's bring the t, t squared first, then the t, then the 12. And we got this little problem here. It gets negative, which is the same thing that's the problem in problem number 6. I don't like to deal with negatives. Plus, this the quadratic formula looks funny when it deals with negatives here. So we could either multiply through or divide through by negative 1. But at the same time, notice the 16, 32, and 12. Do they have a common number, common factor as well? Have 4. How about let's do this here, which is what we do in number 6 as well here. Let's divide through everything by negative 4. So, yep, as long as you have the equal sign, absolutely. Zero divided by negative four is zero, and negative sixteen divided by negative four is a positive four this time, t squared. And let's see, uh, thirty-two divided by negative four is a negative eight t, and negative and negative is a positive, and then it's t three. That works. Okay. Can you set up the quadratic formula with the numbers that need to be there? So opposite of t opposite of b, so opposite of a negative eight, positive eight, plus or minus. Square root. Let's square the eight gives us sixty-four. Here we go. Minus four from the formula, then four from the a value, and then three from the a value. Two times four, which is the a value. All right. Uh, let's see. So that's 48, so 64 subtract 48. So plus or minus 8 subtract, and that's going to be 48. It is at 16, 16 over 8. Good, perfect square. I like this. The square root of 16 is a 4, so 8 plus or minus 4 over 8. All right, and again, just deal with so we can deal with smaller numbers here. Okay, is there a number that goes into 8, 4, and 8? Ah, 4 would go into those, huh? So 4 goes into that, 4 goes into that, and 4 goes into that. Gives us a 2, plus or minus 1 over 2. Two plus one is a three. Three divided by two is one answer, and two minus one is a one. One divided by two is the other answer. So, at what times will the object be twelve feet above the ground? At 0.5 seconds, right? Half a second, and 1.5 seconds. Just to give a little illustration here, let's say someone kicks a ball. It's going to take half a second to get up to twelve feet kind of sort of makes sense here. It goes up, turns back around, comes back down, and on its way down it again hits 12 feet high, right? And then it finally hits the ground or hits someone on the head, whichever or. Okay, let's stop here. Um, so you got three options. You can say, Mr. H, I saw my grade online. Good to go.